you Matt for the kind introduction. So I will tell you something about my project I'm working on here since two years in Corby Kistler's lab together with Karen Bros uh, on a project where we are studying and the reorganization of the endoplasmic reticulum of Fusarium graminearum during mycotoxin production in vitro and in planta on uh, weed infection. And first of all, for all of those that do not know Fusarium graminearum as a pathogen, I'd like to give a brief introduction about the pathogen. Fusarium graminearum is a filamentous ascomycete, as we can see here, grown on a complete medium in the lab. And here visualized by fluorescence, electron, uh, fluorescence microscopy, visualizing the cell walls by calcofluor void and the nuclei visible here in this plant. It visualizes nicely this is the filamentous growth of the uh, fungus we are working on. Fusarium graminearum causes a disease that is called Fusarium head blight of cereals, including wheat and barley. It starts with a flora infection disease. Um, it starts with the penetration of the weed flora tissues by infection structures and the systemic colonization through the spikelet and then continuous systemic sp spread through the rachis. During this spread, the um, disease causes necrotic and uh, chlorotic symptoms of the spikes. As we can see here on an infected weed, weed spike 21 days uh, after infection with Fusarium. Um, the grains of contaminated or from, from infected plants are contaminated with trichodecene mycotoxins such as um, the trichodecene uh, compounds deoxynevalinol mm -hmm. and the acetylated derivatives um, acetyl deoxynevalinol, cor short called DON and ADON. Um, these cisquiterpene um, compounds are known to be harmful to humans, animals uh, and plants by binding to the eukaryotic um, ribosomal subunit, the big subunit, and thereby inhibiting protein biosynthesis. The acute toxic effects for humans by contaminated products such as bread or beer or crackers uh, contaminated with those mycotoxins include fruit refusal, uh, vomiting and uh, diarrhea. So we definitely want to keep those um, compounds out of our food supply and um, in Europe, in the United States, there are minimum detection limits for all products meant for human consumption for these toxins produced by Fusarium graminearum. Trichodecenes are also very important for us to study since it is known to be a virulence factor during weed infection, since we know that trichodecenes enable the fungus to spread systemically through the rachis. So that made the trichodecene uh, metabolism for us very interesting to study and to focus. And we were particularly interested in how does the toxin production take place in Fusarium graminearum? Where is the toxin localized in the cell? How are the uh, biosynthetic enzymes of the toxin metabolism organized in Fusarium graminearum? and what are subcellular changes we, that might occur during toxin production and that might facilitate trichodecene biosynthesis and export. So in order to answer the first question where uh, mycotoxin biosynthesis is localized, um, we tagged different steps, different key steps of the production of trichodecenes with fluorescent proteins. And the trichodecene compounds down here uh, DON and ADON are produced via, via the uh, mevalonate pathway and the production of phosphate, which is the first precursor for the trichodecene metabolism. We tag the first enzyme here, HMG co-reductase, that uh, catalyzes a, a rate-limiting step to produce phosphate with GFP to localize it in the cell. However, phosphate is not only used in trichodecene production, it also has essential functions for other biological pathways, such as the production of ubiquinones, steroids such as ergosterol or um, cofactors. That makes the mevalonate pathway as a primary pathway um, to an essential pathway. So um, then we wanted to know 
the steps of the trichody scene secondary metabolism. And to uh, localize that, we tagged several steps of the trichody scene metabolism. The first step catalyzed by the trichody in synthase, the TRI5, um, short TRI5 uh, gene, um, coding for uh, the protein, th the trichody scene synthase. The trichodecene synthase produces um, a molecule that is still not toxic, um, for um, that does not have the toxic moiety, but the TRI4, the next uh, steps are catalyzed by the trichodecene oxygenase that incorporates the toxic moiety, which is an epoxide function between the C12 and C13 position of the trichodecene backbone. We tagged um, also a later step, which is called, uh, which is catalyzed by um, the calonectrin oxygenase, called TRI1, um, to st study different steps um, of the trichodecene metabolism, and we also studied the localization of TRI14, which is an uncharacterized protein. So we don't know the function of this protein yet, but it has been shown that this um, um, protein is involved in trichodecene production in the plant, but not in vitro. And so we were interested in um, where this um, protein might be localized during toxin production. So um, as was on the um, slide before, all those enzymes we wanted to tag are known to be um, transcriptionally regulated by the transcription factor TRI6 that regulates uh, most of the trichodecene pathway enzymes. And um, we did transcription uh, analysis of Fusarium graminearum under non-toxin producing conditions in a minimal media, in a defined minimal medium, in comparison to a toxin-induced medium, um, which is, has the same um, composition as the minimal medium, just the only difference is that in toxin-inducing medium we have the nitrogen putrescine as a nitrogen source uh, in comparison to minimal medium where nitrate is uh, the nitrogen source. Putrescine is known to highly induce the trichodecene metabolism, so in this medium we could um, check for the transcription of different uh, pathways in toxin-inducing uh, medium. And we can see here for the mevalonate pathway, after 48 hours in toxin-inducing conditions uh, in vitro, that um, all of the mevalonate pathway enzymes are highly upregulated. <laughs> Here pointed out also um, the enzyme that we tag, the HMG co-reductase. Uh, in contrast um, to that, we can see here the trichodecene pathway enzymes that are nearly absent uh, in minimal medium, but are highly induced uh, after 48 hours in toxin-inducing medium. I just want to point out here one of the highest counts for TRI4, uh, TRI5, TRI4, um, other enzymes that we tag, TRI1 and TRI14, has all been shown to show a very high um, upregulation in toxin-inducing conditions. In comparison to that, the ergosterol pathway that also utilizes pyrophosphate from the mevalonate pathway is nearly un unaffected uh, under toxin-inducing conditions. It was something that was very interesting for us since we could show that some enzymes of the primary metabolism are co-regulated with toxin production and the toxin and uh, the trichodecene pathway, but other pathways are not affected. So since I said um, HMR1 is highly induced during toxin um, production in vitro, um, John Menke and Jacob Weber already from, from uh, former Lambos lab members in Corby's lab um, already published um, the localization of HMR1 under toxin-inducing conditions uh, was localized to these crescent and spherical structures, also some patches were uh, observed in the fungal cells. And they could also show in a double-tagged strain where the TRI4 enzyme, which catalyzes the second step um, of the trichodecene pathway, is co-localized with HMR1 to the exact same structures. And this is shown here in a 3D movie um, that these are 
uh, really the same structures and not simply overlaying. The yellow color results from an overlay of um, the RFP fluorescence and the green GFP fluorescence. And as we can see, they seem to be localized at exactly the same structures here in those cells. So since HMR1 is also expressed under non-toxin producing conditions, we could um, observe where the enzyme is localized in the, um, independent of toxin production. And since HMR1 is described to have eight transmembrane domains and to be an ER resident protein in yeast and mammal cells, we wanted to check if HMR1 is localized to the endoplasmic reticulum in Fusarium graminearum. And in order to prove that, or to check that, um, we did a co-staining with a, a fluorescent, blue fluorescent dye called ER Tracker. It is a live cell dye um, that visualizes the ER um, in living cells. And since we could see that there are these faint circular structures that are presumably um, the perinuclear ER, and we also observed HMR1 localized at some um, peri, um, some peripheral um, structures that are very reticulate. And in contrast to that, under toxin-inducing conditions, we could again see these crescent and spherical structures that co-localized with the ER, thereby we could say um, these are also parts of the endoplasmic reticulum. And we could see those patches um, that also co-localized to the ER. So what we concluded from that is that most probably um, those circular structures are modified perinuclear ER that modified into these crescent structures, while um, those peri um, peripheral ER um, modifies into these patches under toxin-inducing conditions. <coughs> So then we wanted to know, are the trichodicene um, metabolism enzymes co-localized also in these structures, and are they as well uh, localized uh, at the ER? And by uh, standing with an ER tracker, uh, we can confirm that. So by tagging the TRI4 enzyme of the trichodicene pathway and the TRI1 enzyme, which are both P450 oxygenases that have a membrane anchoring domain, um, have been shown to be localized at the same structures at the endoplasmic reticulum. And we could observe these spherical structures, we could observe uh, crescent structures, and also these patches that localize with the ER, co-localize with the ER. Interestingly, when we tagged TRI14, we could um, also see that this enzyme co-localizes with TRI4 at the exact same structures, and also those TRI14 protein, this TRI14 protein is co-localized with the ER. So all these structures, uh, all these proteins seem to be localized at the same structures which are part of the endoplasmic reticulum. So, so to our surprise, we tagged the very first um, enzyme responsible for the uh, first step in the trichodicene metabolism, the TRI5 gene. And we can see here um, by the TRI5, um, the GFP image, that um, the tri trichodicene synthase is not localized uh, at those spherical structures and not co-localized with TRI4 RFP. Um, also, uh, we don't see um, GFP fluorescent in vacuoles and lipid bodies. And so that was a bit surprising for us, but I want to point out here that again, TRI5 still catalyzes a step that is a non-toxic uh, compound for the cell. So to come to the next question, we wanted to know um, since all those enzymes seem to be localized very close um, at the same structures, we wanted to know how close are they localized to each other. And this answer can be, uh, this question can be answered um, by fluorescence resonance energy transfer, um, short FRET. And that uses the fact that fluorescence energy can be transferred from a donor fluorophore to an acceptor fluorophore if the fluorophores are less than 10 nanometers apart from each other. And that um, if the emission and ex, uh, excitation um, spectra of both the donor and acceptor overlap, as seen here um, in this graphic, 
um, there is a transfer occurring from the emission uh, wavelengths of the donor to the acceptor. And this can be measured by a decrease in um, fluorescence due to the loss of the receptor. After photobleaching of the respective re uh, acceptor, there can not occur any threat, and so we should measure an increase in GFP fluorescence intensity after photobleaching. And this is exactly what we measured um, when doing FRET with TRI-4 um, in a double tagged strain with HMR1 and with TRI-1. Um, tri so in comparison to HMR1 with GFP alone and in comparison to, to the GFP fluorescent before RFP photobleaching to after photobleaching, we see an increase of GFP fluorescence um, after photobleaching. So we can see that FRAT occurs. Our FRAT efficiency is positive and we have a high significance um, for um, our FRAT um, um, occurrence. And so we can say that HMR1 and TRI1 are as close as 10 nanometers apart to TRI4 RFP. And so this assumes, or um, we hypothesize from that, that um, these enzymes might form a multi-enzyme complex and the, at the endoplasmic reticulum. So now in order to find out which other TRI enzymes might be localized um, at the ER and might be co-localized with TRI4 and the other enzymes. We did um, transproteomics um, uh, analysis by um, isolating the uh, ER membranes, the crescents and the spheres uh, from a TRI4 RFP expressing strain. And we sorted those structures by uh, fluorescence activated cell sorting um, by size and by fluorescence. We uh, therefore we uh, protoplasted and lysed the cells and uh, obtained RFP minus and RFP uh, plus fractions that we could um, use for protein extractions and LCMS uh, analysis to identify the proteins in those crescent um, structures. So in detail, um, what we did is visualized here. Um, first, um, that is uh, a work that Karen did together with Corby. Um, she protoplasted um, the cells of a TRI4 RFP expressing strain and lysed the cells in the lysate are then the uh, fluorescent parts visible. Then we pre-sorted uh, our lysate to remove um, aggregates and uh, structures that are um, too big to be um, um, the um, um, crescents and the spheres and then took um, a part of a non-fluorescent um, section of our uh, cell lysate and resorted that again and got rid of all um, the higher fluorescent particles um, and in comparison to that our um, high fluorescent particles with about the same size um, are sorted here and we could get a pretty pure fraction of that. We had three um, biological replicates and sorted about two million of those events and analyzed those by GCMS. Um, and the rough results of that are shown here in a heat map. Uh, and what I point, want to point out here is that the proteins that are enriched uh, in the RFP plus fraction, which is the fraction that should have the RFP expressing membranes, our crescent and uh, spherical structures. And what we can see that under the highest counts are actually those proteins that we tagged already and that we could um, show to be localized at those structures by fluorescence microscopy, including TRI4, TRI14, TRI1, RFP is also detected um, logically, um, HMR1 is visible there, but we also find a protein that we haven't tagged before, for example here TRI11, that is an enzyme that catalyzes the steps in between TRI4 and TRI1. And so that would be a new, um, very interesting candidate for us to tag next and to see if this enzyme is also localized um, at these structures at the endoplasmic reticulum. 
I also want to point out these stars here um, that um, mark genes or proteins um, that are involved uh, in the endoplasmatic reticulum into um, um, folding processes. Um, and so that kind of um, resembles or um, uh, confirms what we already showed by uh, fluorescence microscopy and gives us former hints on which um, proteins we should tag for the future. So to sum uh, that up, we could find HMR1, TRI4, also TRI11, TRI1, and TRI14 in our proteomics data. And now wanted to know um, what is this um, reorganization of the ER, what is um, occurring with the ER during toxin production. And in order to um, elucidate that question, I did um, super resolution microscopy uh, with the endoplasmic reticulum stained with an ER tracker, um, together with uh, Guillermo Marquez at the University Imaging Center and compared the ER pattern under minimal medium, so under non-toxin producing conditions. I should say that the minimal medium, the non-toxin producing condition medium, is we used here uh, for fluorescence microscopy, it's the same we used for transcription analysis, and it's the same we used for proteomics. And um, so what we um, could see here again is this faint perinuclear ER and um, the reticulate structure of the ER. We see more fine structures here in the cytoplasmic parts. We see lipid bodies that are part of the ER. I will explain that in a few slides in more detail. Uh, and in comparison to that under toxin-inducing conditions, we see an overall tubular appearance of the endoplasmic reticulum. We see a pronounced perinuclear ER, and we also see lipid bodies here. Um, much better um, visible is that in a 3D um, reconstruction of the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, now here under non-toxin producing conditions, where we can actually see the um, cisterne and um, the vesicles and the tubes uh, very nicely. But in comparison to that, we can see here the three-dimensional structure of the ER is very different under toxin inducing conditions. It is overall tubular. We see those patches and we see the perinuclear nuclear ER like a, like a pot. Um, and what I want to point out is that these round structures that we saw, those lipid bodies, um, were identified um, by co-staining with ER tracker and a lipid body specific dye that is called Bodipi. Um, this green dye has been shown to co-localize um, with these dots that we um, localize with the ER tracker in both uh, minimal medium and also under toxin um, producing conditions. However, um, they do not co-localize with parts where trichodicene metabolism seems to take place. So that was um, interesting for us to know that there are also parts of the ER that do not seem to be altered uh, during toxin production. And uh, also it made sense for us that lipid bodies are part of the endoplasmic reticulum since they are described to develop uh, from the ER uh, in yeast. So then we wanted um, to prove if um, we see the same reorganization of the endoplasmic reticulum if we tag the ER um, with proteins that are not related to trichodicene metabolism and that are not related to ER tracker. And so what we did is we um, fused GFP to the ER retention signal HDEL, so thereby um, shuttling uh, GFP always back to the ER. Um, and also we studied SEC22, which is a snare protein, um, which is described in the secretary pathway uh, of Fusarium and has been shown to be mostly uh, localized at the endoplasmic reticulum in Aspergillus oryzae. And so we tagged um, those um, and observed 
the fluorescence under minimal medium and toxin inducing conditions and we can again see um, the the reticulate perinuclear ER and peripheral ER um, stain here or tagged here by a, a GFPH cell, but under toxin inducing conditions, we can see the pronouns perinuclear ER and those um, patches seen here. And with SEC22, we observe the same. So we can say that um, the reorganization of the ER also um, is visible independent of ER tracker staining and independent of tagging um, trichodesine related enzymes. And what we could also show is that um, lipid bodies are not targeted um, by the vesicular pathway or by HDL-GFP as uh, we expected it to be since none of the two proteins are involved in lipid uh, biosynthesis or fatty acid metabolism. So what we then wanted to, uh, to show is if these uh, spheres and crescents are really perinuclear ER, so if they contain nuclei um, inside. And that question could be answered by a double tagged strain that visualizes the nuclei by, a his, by an histone tag. Um, the histone H4 is tagged here with GFP. Uh, and in a double tagged strain where the, um, the ER parts um, are tagged by um, TRI4. And with ER tracker, we can again see um, the thickening of the ER, and we can also see the co localization of those patches with the ER. But we can also see that um, those crescent structures and spherical structures do contain nuclei. However, those patches are not associated with nuclei. That actually can be um, observed pretty nicely in a um, three-dimensional movie um, that shows here um, only partially the cell wall and how these um, nuclei and, or modified nuclei and the ER um, is localized in the cell and those patches that are not associated with nuclei. So then one of our basic questions was, are, is this an effect during plant infection? And so in order to um, study that, um, we chose a system where it is known for Fusarium graminearum um, that uh, Fusarium induces the trichodesine metabolism pathway in those uh, infection structures here during infection on, of wheat. Um, that has been shown by expressing GFP under the control of the TRI5 um, promoter, which uh, is the gene catalyzing the first step of the trigodesine pathway. Um, and thereby they could uh, monitor where the TRI5 tri gene uh, is expressed, and they could identify, or we could identify that in these um, low beta pressoria, in these infection structures, um, here um, the entire mycelium is, is visualized by constitutive expression of DSRED uh, under a constitutive promoter. And so we inoculated wheat florid tissues um, and investigated those infection structures to see if the same ER modifications are also um, induced uh, in, in these infection structures, and we could confirm that. So here um, the cell wall is visualized by calcofluor white. And whoops. Um, and uh, here we can see those um, proliferations of the endoplasmic reticulum that has the same morphology as we observed that uh, in vitro. And what was um, also interesting that we can also observe these patches that are not associated with nuclei and thereby we assume are modified perinuclear ER. Uh, in this movie, um, showing 3D movie, building up from the bottom to the top of the infection structure and shows that um, the modification and the proliferated appearance of the ER is pretty similar to what we observed um, in vitro culture and uh, shows the same organization of the ER around the nuclei and uh, independent of nuclei. And then we wanted to know um, what is the ultra structure of toxisomes? Is this actually a swollen uh, lumen of the ER or are these stacked ER membranes that cause these proliferations? 
And so in order to answer that, um, I did transmission electron microscopy um, of um, cells showing the crests and fears and, this, and the patches. Um, we did a cryo-electron method with high-pressure freezing and freeze substitution to maintain um, the um, ultra-structure of the cellular organelles. And under minimal um, medium and non-toxin-producing conditions, we could confirm here um, the thin nuclear envelope surrounding um, the nucleus. We could also see rough um, ER parts that are um, reticulate as we could see that also by fluorescence microscopy. But under um, toxin-inducing conditions, we see here those highly stacked membranes uh, attached to the nucleus and partially surrounding the nucleus. Um, we could also observe that the patches that are not associated with nuclei are concentric stacks of ER membranes. And what we could also see is that these membranes are smooth ER membranes since there are no ribosomes attached to them. Um, so that's how we could um, characterize these different structures of the ER. And what we could also see is that um, these, for example, these patches are connected with a um, ER, for example, here by uh, rough ER strands. So they are not separated. Um, there's, it seems to be a continuous network um, of the ER. So, uh, in the summary, we can say that we observed that four proteins that are involved in trichodicene production co-localize with proliferations of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum up in toxin induction in vitro and in planta. That are the FRAT analysis and proteomics data indicate a multi-enzyme complex that acts during um, trichodicene production for Zarum gram and Yarum. Um, and we um, assume that trichodicene biosynthesis may be spatially separated from other essential pathways and functions of the ER. And um, in the cell, we about picture it um, like shown here in this scheme. Uh, we have shown that four enzymes uh, related to toxin production are co-localized to these smooth ER membranes that are uh, seem to be connected uh, with the entire ER. We assume that the mavolonate pathway, enzymes we don't know where they are localized yet, um, provide the precursor for HMR1 producing um, mavolonate and uh, then uh, producing farnesyl pyrophosphate as the precursor for the TRI5 enzyme that has been shown to be localized at the cytoplasm. Um, then the trichodiene is the first precursor for the TRI4 enzyme that includes the toxic moiety here, um, the epoxide group, and then passes, might pass um, the um, substrate further to the other enzymes in the pathway. Here it should be noted um, that we have the toxic moiety already, so um, we are wondering if the um, compounds may be uh, transported by a vesicular transport um, to uh, outside of the cell to be secreted, since we also know that tri-8 that catalyzes the last step of the trichodicene mm -hmm. metabolism by removing an acetyl group um, here at the 3 position, thereby incre increasing the toxicity of the trichodicene um, by hundredfold. Um, we know that this enzyme is supposed to be a secreted lipase. It has not been shown yet. Um, and so we don't know if the last step is taking place outside or maybe um, separated uh, from the cytoplasm by vesicular transport. Uh, we still want to find out uh, what is, uh, where are the steps in between of TRI4 and TRI1 localized. Um, and we might also uh, suggest that the production of trichodicenes um, at particular parts of the ER separated, for example, from the rough ER where protein translation takes place, might protect the fungus from the toxic effect of DON by binding to the ribosomes and thereby maybe pro inhibiting its own protein biosynthesis. 
And we could also show that lipid bodies um, are not uh, affected by um, the trichodesin metabolism enzyme. And um, this is what we are ended up with. <laughs> and with that, um, I like to does it do it? Yeah. Um, I like to thank a couple of people that have been uh, a lot involved in this project, uh, especially my colleagues um, from the Syria Disease Lab, Corby Kistler, Karen, who did a great part in this project, John Menke and Jacob Weber, um, lab members that have been working on this project prior to me. Um, our cooperation partners at the, at the UFM, Gary and Yang Hong, um, our co-workers or uh, collaboration partners at the UFM Imaging Center, at the EM Characterization Facility uh, in Minneapolis. We are very grateful to Mikael Freitag and Lanel Kalnali for providing the H4 tag strain. Um, we are grateful um, to our collaborators at the JGI and the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory that supported us with the proteomics and transcriptomic data. And we are most grateful to our funders, the USDA and the NIFA and the AFRI Foundational Program for funding our research. Thanks for your attention.